Midlife blues got you down. I know the feeling because at 40, I went through a midlife blues or midlife crisis period. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you what I did to move through it. Welcome to the Therapy Show Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. In each episode, I interview a seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapist from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. And if you're considering a career in the counseling field or just want to hear about what it's like to be a talk therapist, then this is the podcast for you. Well, hey, friends, welcome back to another episode of The Therapy Show. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. And in this episode, I want to talk to you about midlife crisis or midlife blues or midlife meh, whatever you want to call it. So my midlife crisis happened right around 40. I felt really low and like I had lost myself, completely lost myself after having kids and advancing in my career. I felt as though I didn't have time for myself and all I did was do things for other people. So something had to change and I knew that it began with me. So instead of at that point in my life thinking, seeking out a therapist, I sought out a life coach and I'll tell you more about why in just a little bit. In fact, you can hear an episode of me interviewing my life coach. It's called the magic and asking the right questions with Bill Mayer. And you can find the link to that episode in the show notes. So when I started working with Bill, I began telling him all about how I was feeling blue and off balance. And I was really wondering if he could help me. I was used to going to therapy and, you know, processing my past. And I had yet to work with a therapist who was as action oriented as Bill, you know, don't get me wrong. I definitely brought up my life experiences with Bill. And while they were important for context, they really weren't what we focused on in our sessions. Bill helped me identify where I was stuck and why, and not only identify where I was, but he helped me make a plan to move through it all. And he held me accountable to my goals. And one of the things that I learned right away was that having this work-life balance is completely a myth. So we can't always be in a blissful balance of work and life. It just doesn't work that way, right? I'm sure you could, you're nodding your head and saying, yeah, as much as we, we strive for balance, what we really need to be focusing on are our values and priorities. Because when we know what we stand for and we know the actions we need to take, we start to live out our values congruently, authentically. And that's when we begin to feel balance that we're all chasing. You know, identifying your values takes some self-detective work for sure, because I want to know if you're up for the challenge, because you don't just pick your values like items on a menu. I believe they are revealed to you through activities, experiences, and exercises. And once you've identified your values, it may be a little overwhelming for you. It might feel a little overwhelming, especially if you've chosen more than just, you know, three to five So I would encourage you to pick your top three to five and get very clear on what they mean to you and why. Then once you have them listed out, what's your action plan for living them out daily? How will you incorporate living them out in your day to day? That's the big question. So I want you to identify those top three values. And then I want you to pick one and I'm going to give you an example of mine in a second, but I want you to pick just one value and Pick three actions that you can take daily that will allow you to live that value out. For example, did you put health down as one of your values? Because that's one of mine. Um, So what three activities will you plan out for each day that are doable so you can attain that value of having really great health? As in, are they, they're not a stretch for you to get in. They're non-negotiables. You know that you can meet, okay? So here's my example. So health is a big one for me. And Bill encourages me and I encourage my clients not just to say health, but to get really visual and to get really high energy on that value. So for me, it's not just health, it's optimal and vibrant health. I mean, gee, like when I say I'm after optimal and vibrant health, that just picks me up and makes me walk a little bit, you know, stronger in my step. So I knew that for me to have optimal and vibrant health, I needed to have three, at least three non-negotiables that I could hit every day. So when I was in my early forties, they were movement such as walking or lifting weights. Okay. Every day, three, one of the three activities was that the number two activity was eating three healthy meals a day. And then the third one was getting my sleep in. And those are non-negotiables, right? So in my early forties, when I would accomplish them, I realized that, Hey, I'm showing up as my best self. I'm, 
if health and optimal and vibrant health is a high value for me, I need to commit to showing up every day and doing these things. So I'm living at that value. So health wasn't just like, or, you know, eating three meals a day or exercise wasn't just an item on my to-do list anymore. It became a value. I began to live that value out daily by doing those three activities. And it didn't take long for those three activities to become habits. So then I started to add on others. Okay. So when I don't do those activities of optimal and vibrant health, I start to feel off balance. So do you see how this is all kind of coming together and making sense? Okay. I know this might feel a little overwhelming right now because maybe you're in this midlife crisis spot and you don't know how to get to the other side. You're having a hard time seeing it through. Maybe your relationships are feeling kind of, you know, you're feeling lonely in your relationships or in your marriage, or maybe with your work, you're feeling unfulfilled or you're unhappy with your health and body image. You are not alone. So many people go through this when they hit some people and they hit like mid thirties is when their midlife crisis or midlife blues start to kick in. It's not a death sentence. You can definitely move through these feelings and come out on the other side, living optimally and vibrantly and congruently and authentically and walking, you know, taller in your step and feeling amazing in your skin. It's not too late. I promise if I can do this, you can do it too. And you guys, I'm 49 and I've never felt better in my life. So when I was 40, you know, (laughs) I was either all in as a therapist or all in as a mom and wife. And I really had a hard time finding that balance. So when I got to work with Bill and think the pieces started to like come together, it all started to make sense. And there was no turning back. And now I'm offering my work-life balance coaching, or we could call it midlife crisis coaching, really kind of the same thing in a way, I want you to head over to my site and click on the tab that says therapy and coaching services and schedule a free, 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 free 20 minute consultation with me to see if I can help you with your balance. You can also take my, is your work life balance out of whack quiz to see how well you fare. And then if you take that quiz, you'll hop on my email list and I'll start emailing you some of my best tips and advice for really living authentically and congruently moving forward. So I would love to work with you to see if we're a fit. Let's get started today. Head to my website and schedule that 20 minute call or take the quiz, get more information. And you guys, I would love it. I would love to see if I can help you live your best life. Thanks for tuning in you guys. And I will catch you soon. Hey guys, before we end this episode, if you are liking my content, if you're liking my podcast, be sure to go over and leave me a five-star review on the podcast platform of your choice. And if you are up for it, I'd love it if you left me a review as well. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamuster.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank Thank you. you.